Um, can I call upon um, Assembly Member Berry to move the Green Amendment, the Green Party Amendment? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, all the changes proposed by the Green Group in this amendment uh, will help put more pieces of the power that runs this city back in the hands of Londoners. It's the budget, so we're talking mainly about spending power. And out there, we're crying out for more of this. Uh, we're designing improvements to our streets, real high street regeneration from the grassroots, and our amendment plugs some of the gaps in the Mayor's plans to improve the chances of winning funding for these local improvements. We're also putting time into planning community energy projects, and we need that fully licensed energy company. We want to plan the future of our local areas and estates, and our amendment helps to put in professional help at the right point to develop those ideas. With this amendment, we'll build a more resilient city too, helping small firms hit by major events and investing in our young people, getting at the root causes of why they can get into trouble by showing how much we value them, even if the government does not. We don't want to change everything about the Mayor's plans, uh, but Green Ideas, as they always do, aim to improve and build upon what he's doing and correct a couple of mistakes, which my colleague, Assemblymember Russell, will outline shortly. Greens are critical friends to our opposition, and I hope the Mayor will agree our contributions are constructive and helpful, even though we're never scared to call him out when he gets things wrong. On uh, council tax this year, the Mayor is using all the leeway the government is giving us to raise money to invest in the future of our city. We support this decision. Last year, ignoring our amendment proposals, he didn't put up the non-police part of the council tax precept at all. He foregoed £4.3 million that would have added about £4.5 million to this year's budget too. In total, that's nearly £9 million over two years, around £1.50 a year from the average council taxpayer that I think they would have been happy to give. I'm continuing to monitor youth service cuts across London, and I found that on top of a cut since 2011 of more than a third, more than £30 million in annual spending, that is, from just the 13 councils who've given me their 2018-19 budget plan so far, another £1 million is coming off these services this year. In this context, £9 million could have done a lot of good, plugging at least a little bit, at least some of the gaps left by central government through councils in supporting young people. I do agree with the Mayor uh, when he says that council tax is not a fair tax. It falls more heavily on those near the bottom and the wealthy are asked to pay nowhere near their fair share towards local public services. That's why it's important that any extra money we ask for goes into services that provide the most value to the most hard hit parts of London. And this is what we propose here. For example, the part of our amendment that remakes Space Hive to do more to help areas that have ideas but can't mount a huge match funding drive from local people. And that's why all councils should be following the lead of, of my borough of Camden and not charging their poorest residents any council tax at all. Too many councils are cutting council tax support. They're putting people who simply cannot pay into debt by abolishing the 100% relief they can give to working age people and demanding at least some council tax from all of them. Camden did this for three years, but found it was causing too much hardship and that it wasn't worth chasing people for the arrears. Now, other councils who can see what happened in Camden, they should be ashamed to be keeping on with these policies now. We've got places too nearby not to have seen what we did and learned our lessons. Islington and Hackney are doing this. Lambeth have just decided to do the same thing. I asked the Mayor um, earlier this month to call on councils to drop these policies, but he wouldn't. So I'll do that directly today. Please, councils, stop charging council tax to those who are too poor to pay. It isn't fair and it doesn't work. So the Mayor, yes, he's announced that £15 million of the additional £49 million going into the police from the rising council tax will be spent on knife crime. But he confirmed today that's about mainly enforcement and detection, the kind of preventive work that consists of knife sweeps, searches and intelligence. Uh, we do something slightly different with some other pot of funding that we have. Um, the rise in youth violence, it's devastating and we need real long-term prevention, the kind that comes from the public health approach that I was pleased to hear the Commissioner support when I questioned her before Christmas and other Met officers talk about publicly since then. 
The Mayor's helpfully asked for suggestions for how to use the expected council tax surplus of £20 million that will be confirmed later this month, and our amendment responds to that request with proposals to, first of all, boost the London Crime Prevention Fund, not just for one year, but with £5 million each year, dedicated to funding preventive and supportive youth work. Community organisations and frontline youth workers do say it's very difficult to plan effective long-term programmes with short funding schemes, so that's why over three years, five million a year is going in. This will actually double the amount of LCPF funding for youth support, um, and it'll do that in a sustainable way. The other five million pounds uh, I want to see invested as soon as possible in healing those communities already affected by the trauma, injury, and waste of young lives that youth violence can bring. We need to be funding good ideas like those from the Forefront Project and JAGS Foundation with real investment that they can use up to build up their capacity and work with more young people. If every penny of the surplus was put into real prevention work like this, then not a penny of it would be wasted. And finally, I want to advocate for the first part of our amendment, uh, aiming to help communities who are putting together ideas and plans for their estates and local areas to access the professionals they need to draw up and cost their plans. We're at one in this assembly, I think, in supporting resident-led planning for estates and a real say for people facing demolition, and the Mayor's Draft London Plan adds to this need uh, with its new opportunity areas and many local sites around town centres uh, now labelled as strategic areas for regeneration. This is set to put more and more neighbourhoods into play with a corresponding increase in the number of local communities thinking about local area plans and needing help. Labour members here at uh, the last Mayor's Question Time were making similar points and I hope they would support this idea too. Our proposal is to make a start on a fund created via a reasonable increase in planning fees charged by the GLA, a fund that local community groups and estate residents can bid for when they need a planning expert, an architect, a quantity surveyor or a lawyer's advice to help them develop and flesh out alternative plans to those put forward by their councils or indeed the mayor. It could help them make the case that demolition isn't good value for money compared with their plans or it could work up a business case for a viably different mix of businesses, homes and tenures for a town centre site. Um, I have to say also that I'm, I'm pleased some of our ideas from last year's budget have become so well accepted and taken up by the Mayor and other groups here. Um, I hope that if not in the final budget meeting next month, then at least by next year we'll see the ideas that we've proposed today adopted in a similar way. And if you support them already, why not vote for our amendment today <laughs> and send a strong message to the Mayor that we want to put more power into the hands of our brilliant citizens and more money in place to back up the work that they do. I therefore move the Green Amendment to the Budget. Okay.